Ezekiel chapter number 40. 40 being the number of testing. In the fifth, in the five and twentieth year of our captivity, in the beginning of the year, in the tenth day of the month, in the fourteenth year after that the city was smitten, in the self same day the hand of the Lord was upon me and brought me thither. And in the visions of God brought he me into the land of Israel and set me upon a very high mountain. By which was a frame, which was as the frame of a city on the south. 586 B.C. was the final destruction of Jerusalem. And the date of this given written here is 574 B.C. The city is gone. Ezekiel is brought to the city on a high mountain. And there is what we're going to read. Though it's gone presently as Ezekiel's writing. It's not there, but it's going to be there. And the visions of God brought me into the land of Israel and set me up upon a very high mountain by which was as he's not there. The frame of a city on the south and he brought me thither and behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of brass brown. With a line of flax in his hand and a measuring reed, and he stood in the gate. Gates are gone; they're burning. Uh, Nehemiah told us. The man said unto me, "Son of man, behold with thy eyes and hear with thy ears, and set thy heart upon all that I shall show thee, for to the intent that I might show thee unto thee." Art thou brought hither, declare all that thou seest to the house of Israel. So what we're going to read now on is written to Israel. And behold, a wall on the outside of the house round about, and in the man's hand a measuring reed of six cubits long by the cubic and, and hand breadth. So he measured the breadth of the building, one reed, the height, one reed. Now again, the, the modern temple is gone to Ezekiel. It's not there no more. Ezra and Nehemiah proved that. Now the question lies, we look at chapters 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, Lord willing. Who builds this? We're told the dimensions of the windows. We're told the dimensions. But we're going to study things. I have no idea what they're even talking about. Maybe somebody who's in carpentry or building knows what, the, what it's talking about. Who built it? Here the city is destroyed. It's gone. And Ezekiel's brought forth. And here's the city. Wait a minute. It was destroyed. Who put it there? Then came he unto the gate which looked toward the east. And went up the stairs thereof, and measured the threshold of the gate, which is one reed broad, and the other threshold of the gate, which is one reed broad. I'm not going to be able to tell you much here. And every little chamber was one reed long, one reed broad, and between the little chambers, as little rooms, were five cubits. And the threshold of the gate, that's, that's the opening of the gate, by the porch of the gate, within was one reed. He measured also the porch of the gate within one reed. Then measured he the porch of the gate, eight cubits, and a post thereof two cubits, and the porch of a gate was inward. And the little chambers of the gate eastward were three on this side, three, gate, three little rooms on this side, three on that side, three on the other side. And they three were one measure. The rooms were the same size. And the posts had one measure. All the posts were the same size. On this side and on that side. He measured the breadth of the entry of the gate. That's how wide the gate is. Ten cubits. And the length of the gate, thirteen cubits. You know, all this we're reading about, and we don't even know when Jesus was born. 
And then I read today that, oh, Jesus was born December 25th, and he was circumcised on January 1st. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And he measured, a, I mean, with all these measurements that I'm not going to be able to tell you about, you think God, if he really wanted to know the date, he would have told us? Didn't this chapter start off with a complete date? And he measured the breadth of the entry to the gate, 10 cubits, and the length of the gate, 13 cubits. The space also between the little chambers was one cubit on this side, and the space of one cubit on the other side. The little chambers were six cubits on this side, six cubits on that side. And he measured then the gate from the roof of one little chamber to the roof of another. The breadth was five and twenty cubits, door against door. From the center of the door to the center of the door, from the center of the roof to the center of the roof. You probably draw this out. If I have given time with the architectural skills, the basic skills I have, I could probably draw this. He made also posts, you know what a post is, of three score cubits, sixty, even unto the post of the court round about the gate. And from the face of the gate of the entrance unto the face of the porch of the inner gate were fifty cubits. And there were narrow windows, you understand? Little, you ever see going in the building, they got these little the rectangular windows, not square? To the little chambers, and to the to their posts within the gate round about. Likewise, to the arches. The windows had little arches. You know, it's a round, half, half round. You see them in houses. And windows were round, were round about inward. And upon each post were palm trees. So they drew or had palm trees engraved on the posts. So if you think you see enough palm trees in Florida, you're going to see them in the millennium. Then brought he me into the outward court, lo. Now the outward court would be what's outside. And lo, there were chambers, and a pavement made for the court round about thirty chambers where upon the pavement. So outside the court, it's paved, it's not dirt or dust. And the pavement by the side of the gates over against the length of the gates were was the lower pavement. So there's a higher pavement and there's a lower pavement. He measured the breadth from the forefront of the lower gate unto the forefront of the inner gate without a hundred cubits eastward and northward. The gate the outward court that looked toward the north, he measured the length thereof and the breadth thereof. And the little chambers thereof were three on this side, three on that side. And the posts thereof and the arches thereof were after the measure of the first gate. And the length thereof was five cubits, and the breadth five and twenty cubits. And the windows, and their windows, and their arches, and their palm trees were after the measure of the gate that looketh toward the east. And they went up unto it by seven steps. And the arches thereof were before them. So you go up seven steps, and now you're on a new horizon. The gate of the inner court was over against the gate toward the north, toward the east, and he measured from gate to gate a hundred cubits. And after that he brought me toward the south. Behold, a gate toward the south, and he measured the post thereof and the arches thereof according to these measures. And there were windows in it and in the arches thereof round about. Like those windows, the length was fifty cubits. And the breadth fit five and twenty cubits. And there were seven steps to go up to it. And the arches thereof were before them. And it had palm trees on one on this side and another on that side, upon the post thereof. And there was a gate in the inner court toward the south. And he measured from gate to gate toward the south a hundred cubits. And he brought me to the inner court by the south gate. And he measured the south gate according to these measures. This is all measured. And the little chambers thereof, and the posts thereof, and the arches thereof, according to these measures, they were windows in it, and in the arches thereof round about, it was five cubits long, five and twenty cubits broad. So it's it's a rectangle. And the fifty cubits compared to the five and twenty cubits would make it look like a little, little slot, a little... Narrow. 
And the arches, I believe, 50 cubics long. All right, 50 cubics long, that's 5 and 20 cubics. It's very, it's half the size of the length. It would make it a narrow window. I got my measurements up there. And the arches round about were 5 and 20 cubics long and 5 cubics broad. And the arches there were, arches, we're, we're talking about arches here. And we're not talking about the golden arches. Look at the detail God's telling us. Through the tabernacle that Moses built. Through the, through the temple that, that uh, Solomon built. Through this future. The arches round about were five and twenty cubits long and five cubits broad. And the arches therefore were toward the outer court, palm trees upon the posts thereof, and the going up to it had eight steps. Oh, we're going up even higher. And he brought me into the inner court toward the east, and he measured the gate according to these measures. The little chambers thereof, and the posts thereof, and the arches thereof were according to these measures. And there were windows therein, and in the arches thereof, round about, it was fifty cubits long and five and twenty cubits broad. You're going to see this one day. And the arches thereof were toward the outer court. So the arches were, were facing. They had some kind of inlay that went a certain direction. And palm trees were upon the posts thereof, on this side and on that side, and going up to it had eight steps. And he brought me to the north gate, and measured it according to these measures. The little chambers thereof, the posts thereof, the arches thereof. You read every word of the word of God? I wish I could say that with number seven. And the windows into it round about, and length was fifty cubits, and the breadth five and twenty cubits. And the posts thereof were toward the outer court, palm trees upon the posts thereof, on this side, and on that side, and the going up to it had eight steps. That'd be great memory verse. And the chambers and the entries thereof were by the posts of the gates, and they were washed where they washed the burnt offerings. Oh, so the law is coming back. Burnt offerings are coming back. In the porch of the gate were two tables on this side, and two tables on that side, to slay thereon the burnt offerings and the sin offerings, and the trespass one. You didn't read about these tables in, in the ark that Moses read. I believe Solomon had ten tables. I think that's what it was. This one has four. Two opposite each other. Specifically, the sleigh. And at the side without, as one goeth up to the entry of the north gate, were two tables. And on the other side, there were, there was at the porch of the gate were two tables, four more. Four tables were on this side, and four tables on that side. By the side of the gate, eight tables, whereupon they slew their sacrifices. Now eight, twelve. And I get kind of confused with the verse forty about those tables. I'll be reading about three separate tables. 39, 40, 41. And the four tables were of hue stone. That's a heavy table. Big chopper's block. Stone. For the burnt offering. Of a cubic and a half long. And a cubic and a half broad. One cubic high. Whereupon also they laid the instruments. Wherewith they slew the burnt offering and the sacrifice. So here's all the instruments needed to slay the burn offering. We're talking about the burn offering. A specific table to have it to be done on. Where were hooks? You've seen hooks and and with meat and all that. A hand broad, hand broad. Fastened round about upon the tables was the flesh of the offering. And without the inner gate were the chambers of the singers. In the inner court. So here's a room, here's a choir place for singers, which was at the side of the north gate, and their prospect was toward the south. One at the side of the east gate, having their the prospect toward the north. And he said unto me, This chamber, whose prospect is toward the south, is 
for the priest. Now let me make another comment. The keepers of the charge of the house. The priests are coming back. The burnt offerings are coming back. The offerings are coming back. Now let's get it straight. And the chamber whose prospect is toward the north is for the priests. The keepers of the charge of the altar. Oh, the altar is coming back. These are the sons of the Pope. Nope. These are the sons of Zadok. Among the sons of Levi. So one day Israel is going to get their national identity by who they are of the tribes. Especially when God calls out the 144,000. Minus Dan and Ephraim. How are you going to know if you're Levi? How are you going to know of Zadok unless God gives you a revelation of who you are? I don't think any Roman Catholic priest is of Zadok or Levi. And you run and run the reference on Zadok on how faithful that priest was that his name shows up how many years later? 1 Kings 2.35 that's a long way from Second King, uh, First Kings chapter two, to the millennium, and yet that guy's name still shows up. His great 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 Never mind Aaron, the Lord Jesus Christ, with David seated as the prince. How's that? Which come near to the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Which Lord will you come near in Jerusalem in the millennium? Jesus. Explain that to a Jehovah Witness. Because that Jehovah Witness, capital L, capital R, O, capital R, capital D, is Jehovah. And the Lord Jesus Christ will sit in Jerusalem before and will read about him even further. So he measured the court, a hundred cubits long. Going back to measurement again. And a hundred cubits broad. Four square. So it's, it's, it's square. And the altar that was before the house. The house would be the temple. The altar would be the courtyard. You know, there was there was the altar, then there was the brazen labor, then there was the, the veil, then there was the holy place, there was the veil and the most holy place. And he brought me to the porch of the house. Now this was not in Moses. This was of Solomon. The porch of the house measured each post of the porch. Five cubits on this side, five cubits on that side, and the breadth of the gate was three cubits on this side, and three cubits on that side. These are just the measurements of the post that held the roof up. And the length of the porch was 20 cubits, and the breadth 11 cubits. Now, 20 by 11 was the measurement of this porch of the temple, the, the beginning, the entrance to the temple. Now, you know what Solomon's t measurements was? 20 cubits and a 10 cubits. Ezekiel's vision gets one more cubit in breath. Why? I have no idea. 20 by 11 in Solomon's was 20 by 10 cubit. And he brought me by the steps wherein they went up to it. And there were pillars by the posts, one on this side and another on that side. And he closed with this chapter. We'll get more interesting. We'll get more detail. We continue. Lord God, just pray for tonight. Lord, just your blessing, protection here. Lord, for our health. And this, Lord, opportunity for you, Lord, and get this flesh out of the way. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. Shut up. Rachel said. <laughs>